Hi, I'm Scott Whittle, and I'm the co-author of The Warbler Guide along with Tom Stevenson, and today I want to show an introductory view of our new Warbler Guide app. This is the opening page of the app. When you open the app, you get this screen that shows you all the warblers that you might see in the United States commonly. I'm going to go up to the left corner here, upper left corner, and I'm going to open the menu bar. And in the menu bar, you can see you can actually change a number of options, including the view that you're looking at these birds with. So you can use side view, face view, 3D view, which we'll go into in a little detail in a minute, 45 degree, underside, and under tail. So I'm going to go back to side view there, and then you can also see I can filter by season. So I can actually look at spring summer birds or fall winter birds. So that can help you seasonally filter your birds. And also you can filter by location, so you can choose one of the four quadrants of the United States. Northeast, Southeast, Southwest, or Northwest. Finally, you can actually change the order of uh, sorting for this initial page. You can go by color grouping, which is the default, and that actually groups the birds by color and helps you visually find a bird that you're looking for. So sort of the yellow birds are in one section and the browner birds are in another section. You can also sort alphabetically if you're looking for a specific bird, and you can finally sort taxonomically if you want to use that traditional taxonomic sorting order. There's also an about and help screen, and this actually gives you a lot of information about how the app works, how to use it, and all the different options that you have. So let's close that menu bar and look back at this species page. And again, you can see we've actually got all the birds of the Northwest for fall winter right now. And I'm going to tap one of these birds so I can see the species account. So let me tap here, my Gulliver's Warbler, and you can actually see that the bird is shown and you can again swipe through views of that bird and note how the comparison species also change as I do that. You do have your comparison species on the bottom which actually shows you all the birds that we think you might confuse with that bird in that area and you also have uh, more information about this bird. So we've got overview which shows you all the text that you would get in the warbler guide plus the icons. It has photos of the bird with captions and it also has aging and sexing information. And finally, it has maps that show you the migration route for the bird in spring and fall. So let's actually look at what happens when we tap one of these comparisons. So let's compare morning and McGillivrays. When I tap the comparison species, it brings up the two bird view, which actually shows you both birds at the same time. And I can again swipe through my views, including a 3D view. So let's take a quick look at 3D here, because this is sort of an exciting feature of the app. If I'm looking at this comparison, or if I'm looking at a single bird in the species account, I can actually just tap this 3D, 3D button in the upper right corner, and it activates the 3D models. And then I can actually rotate these birds in any direction I want to. And this is really, we think, going to be a very useful tool, because it'll allow the user to actually position the bird exactly how they're seeing it or to study the bird from an angle that you might not be able to study in a field guide. You can also pinch and zoom the bird so you can look at them from a little more distance, for example, like this. And you can also zoom into a very detailed view where you're actually getting almost feather, feather level detail. These models were created over uh, about a year and they're based on a 3D modeling program with um, uh, photographs and then some extra special magic to sort of make it all come together. So um, again, we're very excited about this model. We're going to go back now to um, our back arrow here, and that's actually going to take us back to the species account. And um, let's go back to the filter page again. I'll just show you how we can narrow down birds quickly, which is another really useful uh, feature of this tool. Uh, if you click the filter button in the upper right, you actually get our visual filter uh, screen. And this is really cool because it actually works dynamically. And all you have to do is tap uh, any part of the bird here and then select a, uh, either a quality or a color. So for example, if the back is black on the bird we're seeing, you can see it immediately narrows it down to just two birds that have black in the back. If we wanna change that to yellow, um, or olive, then we actually get a number of choices there. So let's stick with that one and do some other filtering. Let's say we have a bird with a olive or yellow back and it's singing a buzzy song. I'm going to tap one of these top 
uh, menu bars that actually lets me select song quality. So let's say, well, I hear a sort of buzzy song. Well, that's just one bird. Or if I say I hear a clear song, it's down to four birds. So by combining those visual and audio clues, we can actually really rapidly knock this down to just a few choices and get down to the bird we're looking for. And then of course, if you get it down to one of these four birds and you look at those and say, oh, well, I think it might be, let's say, common yellowthroat, now you're back on the species account and you can actually see the comparison birds for common yellowthroat and see if it's one of those or if it is indeed common yellowthroat. Another thing you can study here uh, really effectively, and let me reset this filter and just close that, are songs. And you see the top right button is actually a song button. And when you do that, it actually opens the entire song catalog for all the birds that are being shown. But if we do songs combined with filters, we can actually now go to buzzy songs. This is all the buzzy songs for the area and the time of year. We could go to clear songs and then we could go to a pitch trend like rising. These are all the clear rising songs that you'd hear and you can see it's just one bird. So again, extremely rapid and effective way to filter things intuitively and also by different criteria, both audio and visual. We think that's going to make the experience of trying to identify a bird in the field very um, easy and fast. So let me just reset those filters again. I'm going to hit reset and I'm going to close the music box there. And now let me just show you one more feature of songs. You can go, for example, to Red Start and we can look at the songs tab and you can actually see all the Red Start songs there. And the Red Start has quite a number of variations of songs. Some birds just have two or three. Um, and there's a play button by the right side of each song. I can press play and it'll actually play the song. You're not gonna hear it on the um, on this audio that I'm doing. I'm sorry, I apologize for that, but each one does play. And also note there's a half speed button. So I can actually play songs at half speed, which can really help the user listen more closely to what's going on in the song so they can listen to each part of the song more carefully because a lot of these songs can go by pretty quickly. Also notice though that if I tap one of these songs to play it, all the similar songs for that song show up. So these are all our comparison songs, which might sound like the song that we're playing. And we can play each of those in turn and see, oh, maybe it was one of these or no, in fact, it was that initial song that I was playing. So again, a very fast and intuitive way to quickly listen to and compare songs. And we feel this is another really valuable tool in terms of learning warblers and learning bird songs and birds in general. And um, we're very excited about this aspect of the app as well. Also, if you want to play songs from the main page, you can actually just tap the music button next to each one of these birds and play it. And it actually shows you the sonogram, plays the song, and you can even tap the little carrot next to the sonogram and get a little more information about that specific song that tells you some sort of important details about that song for study. So a lot of good information there. That concludes my tour of our app. I hope that this has been helpful in giving a quick overview of how the app works. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us and enjoy.